Hey, Kimberly Gravis here with yourwriterplatform.com. Today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how you can use PicMonkey, which is a free online photo editing site, to edit, add text, and tweak an image for your blog post. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to PicMonkey.com and what you'll see might be slightly different um, than what I have here. Seasonally they'll change up the pictures, but as long as you have the edit a photo option here and create a collage, you're good to go. So the first step will be to add our image. So we'll go to edit a photo and we'll choose a photo from our files. Now a tip here is to ensure that you're using your either your own photo or you're using an image where you have the permission to alter or modify it from the original. So here's my photo here and I do have permissions to actually make changes and add text and that sort of thing. So what we'll do is go through uh, some of the basic options that you have here and you'll see that there are tons of options. This little molecule icon is the basic edit section. So some of the things we can do here are crop, rotate, uh, adjust the exposure on a photo, change the colors, sharpen it, and resize. Now another tip with regard to uh, the sizing of your photo, if you're going to do some resizing, you just click on resize and consider making the changes or resizing your photo before you make all your other edits and changes. Uh, if you're keeping the proportions, it may not make a difference and then you're, you can size it later on. But if you're going to uh, not keep the proportions of your pictures, that is, adds you know, change the size, make it longer or wider or whatever, then that will distort the changes that, that come after this. So any of the text or any other changes that you make. So I'm just going to make it a bit smaller. I'll keep it proportional. And to apply, all you do is click the apply button. And if you make changes and you decide that's not what you want, you can either cancel or once the changes, once you've applied them, you can go to the undo button up at the top here, which is fantastic. So you can actually undo all your changes all the way back to the original uh, if you choose. So the next option that we have here is this little flask, which is the effects options. Now there are many, many, many effects that you can add to your photo. I won't go through all of them, but I'll give you an idea of how they work. You click on the one that you'd like. So I'm going to click on Orton and you'll see the difference the change that it made automatically to my picture. So as you go through, you can decide what changes you'd like to make, what looks good, what's not great, and you can kind of do it on the fly. So you can make your adjustments here, and if you choose it, you can apply or you can just cancel. I kind of like the changes that it's made, so I'm going to click apply. But you'll find that sometimes it's not what you're looking for. So let's say, let's try something different. I'll just go through them here. There's a few different ones, Urbane, Tranquil, Boost, Soften. You can see that you can apply dark edges to your photo, sort of a frost effect on the edges if you like, sepia tone. So let's try sepia. I know I'm not going to want that, but let's just see how that changes it. So it changes your picture, takes out all the color. You can change the tint and fade in and out as to sort of the, the strength of the, of the application. So it's kind of interesting, but it's not something that I want to apply to this particular photo. But you can see how much playing around it you can do. So since I'm not interested in this effect, I'm going to click Cancel and it will go back to the last change that I made. Now, I'll scroll through here so you can get some idea. There's all different kinds of effects that you can apply if you like. And to get sort of a layered effect, you apply, add another effect, apply that, and so on. So you can add several layers of effects uh, just to the one photo. The next step here is this one is the touch-up, so I don't have a person or people in my photo, but obviously this is a great one for doing touch-ups, fixing problems in your photo, especially when there's people in the photo. The next, this letter P here, is the text, so we can add text to our photo, and you can see here all the different fonts, and I mean there's lots of different fonts. What you're seeing here with this little uh, crown is the upgrade version, I guess. It doesn't cost very much per year 
to have this sort of upgrade. But you can also see that there's really more than enough uh, options here should you want to use any of these other fonts. So these ones would be, well the new ones are actually the new ones you could use, but the crown, the ones with the crowns beside them, those ones are, are fonts that you would not have access to with the free version. But the free version gives you about 60% of the tools to use, so really you would have more than enough just to start. Now the next one, we'll come back to text because we will be adding text, but we'll just finish going through these. Here's the overlays section. And you can see here again, many, many, many options. You can click on the section that you're interested in and then all the different overlays will be sort of revealed. And you can click through to see all these different options. So say I wanted a heart, I don't, but say I wanted to add a heart to my photograph, I would just click on the one that I like and I can resize and it gives me other options here. Um, many different options. So you can see that there's many different things that you can choose to do to enhance your photo. Resizing, you can adjust, you can add the colors or change the colors, and you can also, these blend modes are another sort of, you can just scroll, kind of scroll through and it shows you how they kind of, the effect changes as you go through them. So I'm not interested in this, so since I'm not, I'm going to delete this one, and then uh, we'll scroll through a few more of these so you can kind of see stars, symbols, arrows, that's usually a good one too. Lots of different options again here. Lots of different things you can choose to highlight or add a little bit of interest to your photo. Really, you could just go crazy. And especially seasonal stuff, there's just a ton of options. The next is the frame section. All these different frames, and I'll, maybe I'll click on one here so you can kind of see, let's try the film edge. So you can see how it adjusts the photo. And you can click on each of these, just see how it looks. If it looks good to you, you can accept it. If not, then you can just click cancel. This one here shows you textures. So again, lots of different textures. Let's try smudge. So you click on it, you get several options here, and you can choose if any of these add to your picture or make it look, you know, more like what you're wanting to, the, the idea or the, the emotion, the impact, whatever it is you're trying to get with your, your image. You can add these, make some adjustments. Let's try this one again here, the blend modes. You can see how that changes and I'm just scrolling through them. If I wanted to keep it, I would actually click on it and then choose accept. So that gives you some really good ideas of some of the different things and it's very, very simple to add these features. So you're not spending a lot of time trying to learn, you know, the system. Very intuitive program. And we'll look at this one just because it's the last one here. And this one's the theme section. It was lots of fun with this one, especially again seasonally, or you know, for book covers or anything that you're doing that might <laughs> might require a little bit of creativity and finesse. So look, you can even have fangs, you can change eyes, you can add veins. So it gives you tons of options to play around and make the adjustments to your photo. So we're gonna go back now to, uh, we will be adding text, but I'm gonna to go to the overlay section first. And what I wanna do with this is because I've got a photo that's very colorful, it's got a lot of different colors, it's gonna be difficult to add text directly to the photo and, and make it easily seen. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna add one of these overlays, and right now it's just a black rectangle. But I'm going to make my adjustment. So with this, it's just sort of a drag and drop, click and drag to adjust. And you can kind of, I, I just eyeball it. I suppose there's probably uh, some people who do this a little more scientifically, but my approach is just if it looks good, go with it. So if I drag that in there, it's still too solid for me. So you see here that you can change the colors, make your adjustments, but Instead of changing the black to a color, I'm just going to use this fade button and watch the rectangle as I drag this across. You can see that it gets more translucent, less opaque as I go. So what I want to do is I want to just play with that and find something that's just going to give me enough of a background that will allow my text to stand out. So let's try that, we'll see if that works for me. Now the next thing I want then is text. So I go back over here, click on text, and then I click on the add text button. Let me try this new one. 
and then add text. So it'll pop up in a new box here and you can't see that very easily but it says type your text so I will. And let's see, create images that grab attention. Now, obviously when you're adding text you can choose to highlight a key point in your blog post. You could highlight um, maybe even actually have your headline. Anything that sort of draws the reader in and helps them understand how this image relates to the post and, and convey your message in as few words as possible. So I'm going to add this. Now, again, it's not going to work so well to have you know black text on top of this box here. So I'm going to change the color. And I can change the color of my, my text by clicking on it and highlighting. And then I can either choose from this color selector here or happen to know the hex code for the color that I like. So there's that. Now it's changed it in here. I'm going to slide this over and see if I can adjust it in here. Do I want? And now for sizing, you've got the option here to resize. You can either type it in, choose from here, or what I like to do that works better for me is if you change, you can see how my little arrow is changing to sort of a double headed arrow. If I click and drag, that will change the sizing too. And I'm just going to highlight just one word. And I'm going to change the font on that to highlight that a little bit more. What would I like to use? Let me try this one. I'm going to move fonts there. And I think I will... Oh, I'm going to just move this back up here to where I think it's going to look the best. I click back on my text box. And I'm just going to work that into a place that I like. There we go. So there you go. It's not that hard to do. You can change, you know, your overlays, add your borders, do whatever you think makes the picture pop. But just keep in mind, oftentimes less is more. So you don't want to overdo it. One other thing that I like to add to my images is a watermark. So if, I, if somebody's clicking on the image and it's no longer linked to the post, you know, the people can always find their way back to me or my site. So I tend to do that, and there's, it's an easy way to do that. Again, you just add a text box, type in the text that you want. So in my case, I'm going to add my URL. There. Now, I'm going to just adjust this so that I drag it to the side, and that will change my text box. Now the size obviously is not going to work, but before I get into that I'm going to click on this and I'm going to change the color for this one as well. So there. And I think also I'll change the font. There we go. I'm going to make it bigger again. So you can see there's a bit of tweaking, a little bit of adjusting. You get really used to the program very fast and then some of these things you do, you can probably do them in your sleep. So I'm going to change the size and see how that works. I'll put it down at the bottom of my image. I do want it noticeable but not overtaking the photo. So another thing you can do, again, with the fade button, is adjust this so it looks a little less obvious but still readable. So I'm going to just fade. So you can see how you can fiddle around and adjust until you get exactly the look that you want. That seems to be about right. It's noticeable, it's readable, but it's not overtaking my picture and it's not taking away from the text that I really want to pop. So there you have it. It's basically a very simple process. Tons and tons of options with this program. You can pop it open at any time and use it um, to create the images you want for your posts or for any other images that you're creating for your site. And the only thing you have to do after this is just save it. So thank you so much for, for listening. I hope you've learned a little bit about how PicMonkey works and how you can use it to uh, make the changes and edits to your photos. And that's about it. So thanks for listening. If you would like more tips and resources on building your writer platform, please click on the link to subscribe below. Thanks for watching. Take care.